This is the beginning of Dana's story, Audio 12. How do, I, how do you know Dr. Akers, I asked. He's the brother of a very good friend of mine from college. I've been hearing all summer about what you were doing, he, she explained. Patty and I have been happy to help the people in comas and those who could not speak because they were in tracheotomies or breathing tubes. I said, those were some of the first applications of mind speech that we came up with. It could it not have happened without Dr. Aker's interest and support, I continued. Time was running out for me to get to the next class before the bell, so I left hurriedly. Social studies class was terrible. The teacher seemed nice enough, but he went on for 15 minutes about the new discoveries that were being made in mind mapping and mind speech and how that was going to be changing society as we know it. He kept looking at me and smiling. I wanted to crawl under the desk or just disappear. Finally, the day was over when the bell rang for the last class. I was mobbed by students in the hall. I gave away the last of my business cards. I needed to remember to make up a lot of them. I was going to have to put down the church number on the back with a note about volunteering to help the blind. Dana, do you need a ride home? My brother's picking me up, Paul, Paul Mine called to me. No, I'm okay. I rode my bike. I sent back to him. See you later. The bicycle ride seemed to clear up my head. I'd gotten skirts that were a little longer, I guess, because I was meeting so many adults. They were fine around school, but a little troublesome on a bike I managed. School seemed to gradually fade away, and I was feeling okay when I got home. Living room. Dana, are you settled yet? Could you meet with the teachers from Father John's blind class tonight? I've already mind called Patty, and she said she could be available to merge with you, Mom said when I came downstairs. I guess I can help. Do, do you know what they need? I asked. They're okay with mind mapping and boosting, and they can merge, but they're not sure how to teach a new person to merge. Most of them have been shown how to do it, but when they tried to do it themselves, they couldn't. Mom explained. All right, what time are they coming, I asked. We're meeting them at church at 7 o'clock, one of the classrooms, Mom said. Is there anyone new who does not know how to mind speak that we can use to show them, I asked. There's going to be six teachers and six new people to practice with, Mom said. Okay, I sighed. That was a lot of people for one evening. It was not hard. It just took a lot of patience and care to get it right the first time every time. There's not much room for error when there was a deadline. My room. I read my English assignment and I worked on some problems from the math homework. I was pretty good at pre-algebra, but I did not want to get behind. I was going to leave the rest of my homework for Sunday afternoon and evening if possible. The ghostwriter had emailed some draft chapters for me to look at. I read them through carefully and I made a few corrections. I used the track changes feature in Word to show her the changes I suggested. The changes were under my name. I sent the draft on to Patty and she would look at them and make her own changes and suggestions before sending them back to the ghostwriter. I felt like I'd gone from childhood directly into adulthood in the church. We got there a few minutes early, but everyone was already there. I just had dinner, so I got a cold drink and sat down near the front. Mom was talking to everyone. I was preparing myself to teach the class as fast and as efficiently as possible. Patty, can you hear me? Are you ready to merge for the class? I mind sent to Patty. Yes, I'm here. Let me get myself settled in a comfortable chair and set my drink somewhere. How long is this going to take? She mind sent. I expected it to take at least two hours. It depends on how good these people are, I said. Patty and I started sending each other our mind maps and we slipped into a mind merge. I closed my eyes briefly to look at the classroom. There were no b natural brights in the class, just ordinary mind blobs brightened and enhanced because I was in a merge with Patty. I could see the teachers and the new people separating themselves out into two groups. Everyone had something to drink. Everyone had a name tag. It was time to begin. Mom pointed to me and I stood up to face them. I dragged my chair closer to them and turned it around to face them. I wanted to be able to read their name tags. 
Hello, my name is Dana, Dana Freehurst. I will be teaching this class with my sister Patty. When we get started, I'm going to sit down and face you to be comfortable. This is going to take about two hours. I want to take a break in the middle. Is everyone okay, I explain. There are murmurs of acknowledgement and agreement. Patty, my sister, is in her college room right now. She and I are merged already. First, I want to extend that that merge to include all the teachers. Then we're going to connect to each new person. We'll mind speak you first, then we'll ask you to send a mind map to us, then we will merge with you. The teachers will be able to watch and listen as each new person is added to the merge. When we're done merging, there'll be 15 of us. I'm going to include my mom. She'll, we'll then browse on our common mind map and look at the city around us, I explain. Mom, could you join us? I mind spoke to Mom. I remembered to whisper because when two people are in a merge, their combined power is something like ten times stronger than a simple mind speech between two people. I'm ready, Mom said. Mom already knew how to merge, so she, she started sending her own mind map to us while we sent our combined map to her. It took less than a minute for us to feel the familiar feeling of merging. I pointed to the first teacher. I could read her name tag. It said Susie. With my eyes closed, I could locate her blob. It was in a place corresponding to where she sat. I could tell it was her because her face in my mind sight was the same as the face in my eye, to my eyesight. Susie, would you merge? I sent to her. Susie knew how to merge and jumped right into it, sending us her mind map as we sent her the collective mind map. In just a few seconds, she had merged into our group. I pointed to the next one, and he immediately started sending. We merged into our group until all the teachers were in the group. At this point, there was Patty, me, Mom, and six teachers. I pointed at the first newcomer. A newcomer is someone who's never seen blob maps, mind maps who's never mind-spoken, who's never merged, someone with no mind skills. The first newcomer was John. John, hello, I mind-spoke to John. Ordinarily, one person trying to mind-speak a newcomer does not have enough power to get the message through, and a newcomer does not have enough power to send an answer. What we were doing with a merge of nine people, two would have been enough was to overcome the weak signals the newcomer would produce and talk to them directly by mind. Hello, this is John. What do I do next? John sent, and the group listened. We sent John a picture of his mind map, greatly enhanced. A newcomer would see images, including images of blob maps from another mind that the group sent to him. John, do you see this mind map? It's a picture of this room showing the people in it it's as you see it with your mind. This is your mind map. I spoke to John by mind speech and spoke out loud for the benefit of the other newcomers. I was going to tell the same thing. Yes, I see it. It's beautiful. What do I do now? John said. John, here's the common mind map. And I showed him the common mind map we all held. Please take this. Please try to send your map to join ours. I want you to try to send your mind map to the group. You will have to try different ways to send. We'll tell you when you get it right. The easiest way is to keep your mind map in your mind and then try to throw it to us with your mind. I, I, I spoke to him and said it out loud as well. John tried several ways to send the mind map to us. It was his own mind map that he was sending. We, only, we had only enhanced it for him to see. Finally, this is it, John. Try that again, I said to all of them. John tried it again, and it was the proper way. Now, John, start sending that to the group until you merge in yourself, I said to everyone. Just keep sending, he asked. Just keep sending, he asked. Yes, you'll see it get brighter. You'll need to send the brighter image to the group. When it gets brighter still, then send that. Just keep sending, I explained to everybody. John started sending his mind map to us, and we sent the combined map, mind map to him. When we'd sent ours to him, it caused his map to get brighter, then he sent his map to us. Ours got a little brighter. E even now, after doing this so many times, I was not sure how the merge was created this way. But shortly, he merged into the group, and his mind map now was the same as ours. 
or is only a common mind map in the merge. I figured that we'd take about 10 minutes to merge John into our group. John had his eyes closed and I could guess he was looking at all the detail on the common mind map. It really was beautiful. Ellen, hello, this is your mind map. Here's our mind map. Please try to send the mind map to the group I sent to a uh, mind sent to the next newcomer. Ellen had been listening when when I talked to John, she was ready to try. I could feel her trying different ways to send to us. Some were partially successful. I was waiting for the strength to come up to a certain point. She got it in a few minutes. She merged in quickly. In this manner, we merged all of the newcomers. I think the trick was to send both mind maps, theirs and the common one, right away. It was possible to emphasize an image so when we said this map or that map, they would be highlighted. The first hour is up, so we asked everyone to take a break and ease them out of the merge. Sometimes it was hard to break out of a merge. That's not why, that is why we practice it. Everyone took a pit stop, then got something to eat or drink. Someone had provided cookies, bagels, muffins, donuts, coffee, and soft drinks. When everyone settled down after the break, I quickly reformed the teacher's mind merge. I had each one of the teachers go through the steps with each of the newcomers. Everyone's mind speech was clear and loud enough without being too loud. The instructions were clear and consistent. All the newcomers were back in the merge in less than 30 minutes. Then we just spent time looking. A common mind map for so many people was an amazing thing. Usually one person alone would have a mind map that showed the people in the same room, the people in the same building, or the people in the neighborhood. My own mind map only showed me a couple of blocks in every direction. It showed a blob or a dot for every person or mammal in that area. The common mind map of 15 people stretched over many tens of miles and showed every person or mammal as a detailed three-dimensional image of that person. Each person represented had arms and legs and body and head. They glowed a golden color usually with, with color highlights. It was possible to tell from looking at a person's blob that part of a mind map that showed a single person is called a blob of that person, whether they were awake, asleep, or unconscious. We could see them all in, in the map as a bright area with hundreds of people moving around. By bringing emphasis to the image, I could point out different areas, or I could zoom in to show detail of a particular area. <clears throat> So I showed them all in the local hospital. I showed people sleeping and people who were unconscious. Finally, I had to call it an evening. I suggested the same group get together soon and practice on its own, or on their own. That way, everyone would remember what they had just learned and practice it. We could merge in various combinations. I recommended that everyone get used to working in pairs, as that was one of the most effective approaches to the volunteer and teaching applications we had developed. I've thanked Patty and let her go back to her studies. She had received the drafts on our biography and was going to get them done tonight. I grabbed a final donut and then we left to go home. Everyone had thanked me so much I was tired. Saturday in the kitchen. I had started to drink coffee if it was weak enough and had enough milk and sugar. Mom got me out fairly early. Dad was sleeping in. It was hard getting used to Patty not being there. I was so used to going into a room to talk with her. I know she's only a mind speech away, but or a cell phone call away, but it seems so final. Her college is only in northern Virginia, but it seems like a long way away. The Secret Service had left a message on her answering machine last night while we were teaching. Patty and I had talked 24 of them earlier in the week. Apparently one of them, or some of them, had a question that needed answered, that needed answering this morning. It did not leave a message that they needed to merge or mind speak, so I guess a simple phone call would be sufficient in the living room. This is, this is extension 2453. Please state your business. Kind of a cold answer when I called. This is Dana Freehurst. I had a phone message that Max Williams had left last night, I said. Oh, hi, Dana. Do you remember me from the class this week, he said. Yes, I do remember you. Do you have some questions, I asked. We're running classes for new newcomers this weekend. We're starting this afternoon. We're getting 
so the people you train this week can merge see mind maps and mind speak without much trouble we're running into problems bringing in newcomers do you have any suggestions he said I had to laugh <laughs> that's what I was doing last night at the church they ran into the same difficulty do you want me to tell you how we did last night and then you can ask questions or yes he said so I went over the steps we had taken, merging us, then the teachers, then mind calling each newcomer, sending their, them our mind map, sending them their mind map, and then asking them to send to join the group, then breaking the merge and letting each teacher give the instruction to the newcomers. The hard part is feeling them send, so we know the newcomer is doing it right, Max said. Yes and sending them clear images of their own mind map and the common mind map, I said. When we first started doing this, we're taking like half an hour to link in a newcomer. Now we have it down to five minutes or less sometimes, I continued. That bit of holding your mind map and, and sending it, like throwing it something, uh, throwing something is a good instruction. We'll try that, Max said. If you really get stuck, give me a mind call. Do you remember my blob, I said? Yes, I remember your blob, he mind said. What are you asking this for, I asked. I can't tell you most of it, so it's mainly for team cohesion, good team communication, and situational awareness, he said. I thought that was what you were going for from your brief comments before. Have you thought ahead to when group merges get sensitive en enough to screen newcomers for their thoughts, I asked. What do you mean, he said. Well, when a group or pair is sensitive enough, you can read someone talking to themselves. We do that with every newcomer just so we can hear their replies when we mind call them. But with more power and sensitivity it should be possible to read their words even if they're not talking to themselves. We do that with people in deep comas. You can read their words even when they're not aware they are talking. I do not know the ultimate limit but I have been wondering about images and feelings as well. I've only a limited experience with pain in hospital settings I'm sure there's more that could be learned, I explained. So, if we had a sensitive team and a mind merge, we could read the minds of people standing in line somewhere, he asked hesitantly. You might get to the point where you could sense words, images, and feelings. It's just an idea that I had, but I think it'll work. I wanted to try it with Patty, but she's starting her new school now, I said. Thanks, talk to you later, he said. Oh, uh, talk to you later, I replied in my room. I was thinking about mind calling Paul. I am of two minds about him. He's pretty nice and he's good looking on the one hand, but has gotten really involved in mind speech. He probably says the same about me, that I spend all my time promoting mind skills. Maybe I just think he has too many friends and they all want to learn mind skills, and that is what they want from me. I sometimes often get tired of teaching. Paul was the first person I mind merged with. As far as I know, that is the first time in human history that anyone has mind merged. It seems kind of special, yet we seem to be avoiding each other. Or maybe I think he's only running mind skill classes and he wants me to teach. I just wanted to spend time with him and maybe blind dance. I was, kind of, I was tired of all the people around. It'd be nice to have a mind merge partner for school, at least for, at least for school. I can't keep calling on Patty during the school day. It takes almost no effort at all to mind merge with Paul. It seems real natural. I, I want to see how far a merge can go. What I was talking to Max about feelings and images from a strong merge pair, I would like to try that, but it's kind of intimate. It, it is intimate when you're really close mind to mind. We tried sharing images. Could we read images from a newcomer? Could we read feelings from a newcomer? I must be more tired than I thought. I fell asleep thinking about Paul. Dana, this is Paul. Can you talk? Paul called me. He was just calling me a second time when I answered. This is Dana. What can I do for you? I said to Paul by mind speech. Oh, nothing special. I was just thinking about you and wondering what you were doing. Do you have any mind classes scheduled for today? He said. No, nothing scheduled. Are you giving classes at your house this weekend? I asked by mind speech. No. Just a quiet day. I, I was wondering if you'd like to go somewhere, he said. I guess so. What do you want to do, I said. Have you ever been horseback riding, he said. Not since I was a little kid, I said. 
A friend of my mom's runs a riding school. They have offered several times for her and me to come riding, but I never did. My mom says she'll drive me there if I want to go. Would you like to go riding this afternoon, he said. What time, I said, looking at the clock. It's almost 11. We'd leave in an hour and get back before dinner. It's only half an hour from your house, he said. What do I need to wear? Just just wear jeans and tennis shoes. It's warm enough still. We don't need a jacket or anything, he said. I'll check with Mom and get back to you in a few minutes. Mom was okay with me going horseback riding with Paul and his mom. I told her the name of the stable, and she said she'd heard about it. The drive to the stable was perfect. The day was beautiful, and I had a look. I was... Uh, I was a little concerned since I had not done this in a while, but I remembered doing it when I was young and that had been fun. I ended up wearing a pair of riding boots that the owner lent me. She and Paul's mom were going on the advance course. Paul and I were on a meandering walking path. It was one of the mildest mounts in the place, a little black mare with white feet. Paul was riding a tan-colored gelding with a, just a little bigger. We started out at a walk and sometimes went at a fast walk, but mostly were riding out around a circuit on the horses. It was mild enough for me. Paul and I went into the merge soon after we started on the trail. He sent his mind map to me, and I sent mine back to him. When he sent, my mind map got brighter, so I immediately sent it to him brighter than him back to me. It was a method for building up two fairly weak individual minds into one much stronger one. When we had settled into the merge, we were surprised to see that our common mind map contained the two horses. They were fairly bright, not nearly as bright as us two, but significantly brighter than we would see on our own outside the merge. Horses certainly don't talk, at least I do not think they would talk in English, Paul said. They probably think in images, smells, and feelings, I said. Is there something we could send them, Paul sent a question. I have an apple in my saddlebag. Could we send an image of an apple to one of them, I said. Okay, let's try it, he said. We tried, and we stopped both horses on the trail. I sniffed the apple, held it so that Paul could see it and sniff it as well, and put it back to my saddlebag. I brought up the image of the apple in our common mind map. I narrowed down the image so that was all we could see. I could smell the apple through the memory. I brought up the mind map of his horse. When all that was ready, we sent together to the horse. Immediately, the horse started chewing motions with his mouth, whinnied, and started walking forward at a fast pace. Whoa, 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 Paul said, and tried to calm down his mouth. That was certainly a strong reaction, Paul said. Let's try your horse. My horse started chewing motions with her mouth and kind of jumped forward. I was a little nervous and anxious, so I held on and brought her to a halt fairly quickly. Do you think we could reach the horses over there in that field? Paul sent and pointed. Let's just keep it to one horse, I suggested, the one closest to the fence on our left. Again, we prepared ourselves and sent the image to the horse we'd chosen. That horse chewed and jumped just like mine had. It could take years to learn a horse's vocabulary, I said to Paul. But it seems like we, they do respond to mine calls, Paul said to me. We went back to our ride. We rose tri twice around the path, and then we checked with Paul's mom. She was having a wonderful time. The day was so beautiful. She missed her friend, and she missed horseback riding. Paul and I were content, so we rode around two more times. It was starting to hurt from the riding, so we finally stopped and drove home. Paul left me at my house well before dinner. I took a long, hot bath to ease the pains from riding. I stretched muscles I did not know I had. I was walking kind of bow-legged. I felt if I, still, I was still on the horse. I remembered sending the apple image to the horses and their reactions. Maybe it was time to go back to the zoo now that we could mind merge. In my room. I wrote up my experiences of the day and sent them to Craig for posting on the website and I sent a copy to the ghost rider. She might find this interesting. She had not quite decided to where to end the biography, so I guess we could keep adding to it. Max Williams from the Secret Service left a message while I was out. It said that the classes went well, and thanks for the help in starting newcomers. 
I had my cell phone while I was out. He left the message on the house phone, so th th there was probably no urgency. I was tired but awake, so, so I did some more homework. I would just be my luck if I got called on an emergency and did not have time to finish my homework. Would that be a good excuse? The Secret Service called and they had an emergency that only I could fix. Lol. <laughs> Sunday at church. We came to the 11 o'clock service. When we came into the lobby, we ran into Father John. Mom talked with him for a while about the volunteer class he was running to teach people how to help the blind. A volunteer can merge with the blind person and then provide a clear mind map of an area. The volunteer can also send the images to the common mind map so that the blind person can see. Patty and I had learned how to send mind map it, maps and images to blind people before we knew how to mind merge. It was just possible and the mind maps were limited, but even then the mind map gave the blind person a way to see the people around them. When observing traffic, the mind map shows people in the cars. In a mall, the mind map helps the blind person to navigate around people. Father John had offered classroom space for teaching volunteers. We had been running classes in our home and that was getting to be too much. <clears throat> Edith, Jerry, Susan, and Frank Sanders were there so we all decided to sit together. I met Edith and Jerry early in the summer before I'd learned how to mind speak. Their cousin Jack is the first bride I found. It was because of finding him I was able to discover blob watching, mind mapping, and mind speech. Edith's family were all mind speakers now, and they could all mind merge. Susan is active in help, helping coordinate volunteers for coma patients, as well as for the blind and for firefighters. Jack's family were all mind speakers and mergers as well. His mother, Karen, and her sister, Carly, were bo both brides as well. In their whole family, only Jim, the father, was not a bride. With mind merging, it's not as important to have brides as when we first began to teach people to mind map. The service was very nice. There were several baptisms of small children as well as some older, <clears throat> older children. I enjoyed the singing and the sermon, which was on the importance of helping others. After the service, I talked to Edith for a few minutes. I told her about my experiments with the horse yesterday. She thought that was very interested and said she might go to the zoo to see how a merge pair could interact with the animals. Living room. No emergency messages, so I was not going to have to go anywhere today. The volunteers were mostly taking care of the blind, and trained teachers were working under contract to teach newcomers for various organizations. The volunteers were mostly ta taking care of the blind and trained teachers were working under contract to teach newcomers for various organizations. The Mind Mappers Association had gone from completely volunteer to mostly contract work in a few short weeks. Paul Mind called me to see if I wanted to do something. Did I want to go to a movie? I said I did. I would ask my mom to drive. Didn't you just go horseback riding with him yesterday, Mom asked? Yes, Mom, I said. Are you just going to the movie or are you going to hang out at the mall? She, she asked. I think we're just going to the movie. We both have school tomorrow. We, we can wait in front of the doors and you can pick us up there at the mall. Mom dropped us at the main entrance to the mall. We made our way to the movie theater, bought our tickets, and waited for the movie. Do you want to mind merge while we're watching the movie, Paul asked. It might be interesting to see what happens. I'd been in mind merges with many people. I've never tried to watch a movie while merged. I did not know if it'd make any difference than just watching alone. When we went in and sit, sat down, we s sent each other our own mind maps. When I had sent mine to Paul, his mind map got a little brighter. When he sent his to me, my br mind got a little brighter. By continually sending the brighter map, it, maps, both our maps grew quite bright. Finally, there was a stretching sensation and the maps merged into one map. My individual map showed the people 
around me as gray blobs with some detail of arms and legs but hard to see. After the merge, the map showed all the people around me like 3D photos. There were arms and legs and heads and faces. The individual people were no longer dark and gray but bright golden color. I could see everyone in the theater, everyone in the nearby theaters, everyone in the mall, everyone in the city around us. Merging vastly improved the range and detail of a mind map. One of the questions I still had about my emerges was whether it was possible to read the feelings of a newcomer, someone who had never mind mapped or mind spoken. When I merged in a pair or triplets or a larger number, I could hear with my mind what other people were saying to themselves. I could read minds if the other person was saying something. I was able to send eye images to a blind person or to a newcomer when I was in a pair. I did not know how to read images from a newcomer, nor did I know how to read feelings from a newcomer. For that matter, I, could only, I had only limited experience reading feelings from the people I was mind speaking or merged with. Feelings seemed to come across, but I did not know how to read feelings deliberately. Paul and I watched the previews and ate our popcorn. I had plenty of money these days since I was working under contract when I taught mind skills. My mom put away most of my money in an educational fund for college. It was like five full years away still. Paul looked at me now and then. He was not saying much through our common mind link. Every once in a while he would say things like, whoa, awesome, all right, when he saw some unusual action scene. The previews were pretty violent and loud. I decided I would watch the movie through his eyes, so I mind said to him, could I watch the movie through your eyes? Sure, he sent back with some hesitation. I closed my eyes and focused on our common mind map. I closed my eyes and focused on our common mind map. It was mostly taken up with the images from the screen. I was surprised to lose the image when he blinked, but I still got I soon got used to that. It actually takes an effort to separate a mind merge, so I was not worried about him losing the link between us. I had access to his mind through the link. At least I had access to our common mind map. The map could have anything on it that we each might think of. There was a shared responsibility for what got displayed. It took a little effort on my part to see images from his mind, but once I started it was easy. The movie was the last Harry Potter movie. I was surprised that they did not have mind speech in the movie. It seemed a natural skill for a wizard. If wizards could join their powers, they would be stronger. I noticed some feelings coming through the movies. After I got used to seeing the images, I noticed I could feel little tugs on my feelings. There were some sad parts in the movie, and I was sure that the sadness I felt was from Paul, not from me. We came out of the theater blinking, me more than Paul, since I had my eyes closed all the way through. It was different. I'm not sure I would do that again. The little bits of emotion and feeling colored the experience, probably not again. Mom's car was sitting at the front entrance. She had only just gotten there. We dropped Paul off at his house, and I thanked him for inviting me in my room. Doing contract work and teaching classes makes you very professional and careful in your work. I finished up my schoolwork and then read ahead on all my classes. I did not know when I might have to take a day off from school. Mind merging does allow access to emer emotions and feelings. I wanted to mind merge with Patty and see if I could feel the pain of, of people in the hospital. I call, mind called Tracy, a male paramedic at the local fire station. He and Patty and I had met at local emergency room to see if we could read feelings from patients. We, we ended up translating what unconscious people were trying to say to the doctors and nurses. That was part of the reason why Dr. Akers was going to have all the hospital staff learn how to mind merge and how to read newcomers. It was very useful to be able to read what a person on a trach or a tracheotomy or a breathing tube was trying to say. Otherwise, they were mute and could not talk to the doctor and their family. Patty and I discovered how to read the words they wanted to say. Tracy, this is Dana. Do you have a minute? My mind sent to Tracy. I sent three times before I got an answer. <clears throat> hi, t hi. Uh, 
This is Tracy. I was just finishing up something. What's up, he sent. Uh, How is your merging going, I sent. Fine, I can merge fairly easily now. I have one partner at the fire station that I normally work, merge with for fire work. I have another partner at the hospital where I am. Uh, that's where I am now. Of course, distance does not matter, so I could merge with either one or both. Why do you ask, he asked. When, have you merged with any of the patients in the hospital or any of the people you help as a paramedic, I said? Well, in an emergency situation, there's not time to merge with a newcomer. It takes too long, and the patient kind of has to know what's going on, he said. When I've been teaching people how to merge with newcomers, I'm usually doing it so the newcomer can learn how to merge with just one other person. I'm trying to teach the newcomer how to become a partner for a blind person, for instance, I said. Oh, so what does that have to do with how long it takes, he sent in the question. A merged pair could probably emerge a newcomer, even if the newcomer does not know how to mind speak, send or merge. That mean you, you could merge, we could merge with an emergency patient, wouldn't it? Hey, Tracy said. Yes, it would be completely on the part of the merge pair to create and maintain the merge with the patient. It would mean we could also merge with someone in a coma or unconscious, I said. Do you want to try it, he said. Yes, I'd like to. I mind called you to see if you, we could set something up, I said. I'm already at the hospital. I was delivering a patient here from one of our ambulance runs, he said. Sorry to bother you when you're so busy. I did not know, I said. If I had been too busy, I would have sent you a message. I was too busy. I have a few minutes here while the driver finishes their paperwork. Do you want to merge and look around, he said. We merged our two mind maps. There was a feeling when we merged of a snap or a stretch. The more I did it, the easier it got. I sent him my mind map, and he sent me his. In some process, we did not completely understand. The two maps merged, became much brighter and stronger than the individual maps. It's much easier to mind speak and emerge, he sent quietly. It sure is. We only have a few minutes. Do you have someone you want to look at, I sent. There's a young boy who's struck by a car. He has a head injury and is partly conscious, he said. He guided the common mind map to one person, the young boy. We have lots of energy from our merge. We should be able to take his mind map and superimpose it on Earth, ours and form a new mind map that is common for the three of us. That's like having him send his map to us until he merged. It took us several minutes to find the right balance. Trying too hard to merge seemed to make it less likely. Tracy and I ha had to have about equal share in our common mind map, and we both had to have the boy's mind map in our individual minds. There was a sensation of merging, but it was very mild. The merge did not brighten as much as when someone was actively merging, but it was still bright enough to power the merge we wanted. We kept our common mind map as still as possible. The boy's mind map was dark and spotty. We sent our common mi map to the boy. That helped to stabilize him and wake him up slightly. We took the boy's map and sent it to him. That was also helping w helpful in waking up someone from a coma. Suddenly there was a shift in the mind map. The boy was holding on to the common mind map. We felt pain and confusion. I felt a pain in my head that was shocking in its intensity. I let go of the mind map. Sorry, it was hurting too much to hold on. I, I mind called to Tracy. Are you, are you okay? all right? I sent to him. Yes, I'm fine. It was just a little shocking. I think I could have held on, but it surprised me. He said, do you want to reconnect? I asked by ordinary mind speech. Yes, we're trying to learn, he said. We merged again as a pair, balanced our mind maps, then merged the boy. We could feel his pain and sense his confusion, but it was somewhat muted. I think he must have just woken up and felt all the pain when we connected to him. We should have just held on. It would have been okay, I said. You're probably right. We definitely can feel the pain he's experienced. Just, do you feel some problem with his back, Tracy said? Yes, there's something wrong with his lower back. He might have twisted it when he was struck, I said quietly. I have to go now. I think this is very helpful. I'll tell the doctors about his back, Tracy said. Tracy must have seen his driver or realized it was time to get going. We had pretty well shown that a merge pair could connect to a passive newcomer. He disconnected and we lost our connection to the boy. I had some lingering sense of the pain the boy was feeling. 
I wrote up this experience and sent it to Craig Clarkson, the press contact for the Vine Mappers Association. I copied it to Karen, Susan, and my mom since they were all involved with hospital volunteers and training. I also copied it to Patty and the Ghost Rider. Tomorrow was school. I would better get ready. Monday at school. Homeroom was a zoo. Every se everyone seemed to have forgotten something. They were chattering back and forth, so it was hard to hear anything from all the noise. Once the bell rang, it was quieter, but there was a feeling of desperation as people tried to remember schedules and homework assignments. Probably in a few days, this would all become routine. We, sm we suited up for our gym and went outside. I was kind of out of shape, so the run around the track was tiring. We ran far enough to get tired, but not far enough to get a runner's high. We, we did our exercises, and the teacher talked to us about the coming week. I had time to say hello to a few friends from last year. No one said anything about mind skills. I did see Teresa, who wanted to practice mind skills, but she did not approach me. Maybe she was as busy as everyone else. When I went into science class, the teacher motioned to me. I've been reading the mind mappers org, uh, org website you recommended. There's an awful lot of information there. I saw some of the videos you made over the summer that explained mind mapping and how it can be applied. You did a very good job. It also said you're available for speaking engagements. I saw how much they charge. I'd like to have the students know what you've learned. Is there a way you could teach them, he said. Maybe you could show one of the introductory videos I suggested. We make those videos to introduce people to basic concepts. They've been edited and reworked to make them clear and effective, I continued. How did you ever come up with all this, he asked. It took most of the summer and many experiments to discover the basics. We're still finding new information almost every day. I write up my findings and they get published on the website. My sister and I have a ghostwriter helping us to write a biography of the two of us over the summer. It should capture a lot of the early days and how we discovered everything. We're busy writing that right now. R reading the biography will probably be the easiest way for someone to learn how this all came about, I explained. The bell rang and uh, he let me sit down at my desk. I took out my book and my homework. I hoped it was not going to ha I was not going to have to teach all the teachers one by one. When I arrived at my next class, there was a message from Max Williams that he wanted me to call him right away. There was a permission slip that let me go to the office and make a call, so I nodded at the teacher and went to the office. There were several people there, and I did not want them listening in to my conversation, so I mind called Max. Max Williams, this is Dana. Can you talk by mind speech, I said. It took only a couple of calls and he answered. Hi Dana, is MindSpeech better for you while you're in school, he said. Yes, it's good for privacy and it's good when you have a short message. Today I'm happy to have you call and get me out of class so I can talk to you without interruption, I said. I wanted to follow up with you about your suggesting to have a pair read a passive newcomer, he said. Yes, I tried it last night with Tracy, the fire station paramedic. We worked out how to do it and we were able to get feelings and pain sensation over the link, I said. Do you have someone you want to try it? I asked. There's a research group that's working on new applications. They'd like to talk to you, he said. I can send you a copy of my notes from last night which describe how to do it. The trick seems to be balancing the mind map evenly between the two and the pair, then building a mind map of the person that you want to connect to. When the two unique mind maps are held together for a period of time, the mind seems to automatically connect in the passive newcomer, I explained. I will pass that along. Can you take time to talk to them, he said. Could I wait until after school? I'm at home by 4.30. I could talk then more easily and I can send the email notes at the same time, I said. I think that will be fine, he said. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later, I said. I made my way back to the class that had just started. I was going to have to find a way to communicate with the various groups during school hours. Maybe I'd start carrying around one of the smaller laptops. I could at least email people, and I could forward emails. I would not have to wait until I got home. People kept coming up to me during the breaks to ask about mind skills. 
One girl said her father was a volunteer at the church. Several people said they wanted to learn mind speech. Some people get, began mind speaking to me as I walked the halls. I usually cut those short. It was hard to talk to a stranger and walk at the same time. I guess I'd get used to it in time. Lunch came as I was getting a bit frazzled, so many people had been talking to me. I was thinking about my classes. I was thinking about mind merges and what I was going to say to the mind research group at the Secret Service. Besides the usual hassles of schools, I had a professional life I was trying to live in my room. I forwarded a copy of my email to Max Williams. It was the one I sent to Craig updating the association on what I had learned with Tracy about merging in a passive newcomer. I felt it was a very important advance. At exactly 4.30, I got a mind call from Max. He was in a merge with Gene and Richard from their mind research group. They, they had a passive newcomer there to experiment with. I in introduced myself briefly and, the, and gave them a summary of what Tracy and I had done. Then I showed them how to merge in a passive newcomer. Since there are four of us in the merge, the common mind map is pretty stable. I want you all to hold the common map in your mind and then take the mind map of the newcomer. Just hold the two of you in, in your minds and try to merge them. We can see places where they overlap. See if you can force them to merge. Gene, you see if you can force a merger on your own. Take the common mind map and the newcomer's map and try to merge them in your own mind. I think that will call, cause a merge with the group I sent to the group. The two mind maps drifted towards each other and then there was a physical tug and the merge was completed and there was only the new, new common map. Now try to reverse the merge. Concentrate on the newcomer's map and visualize it as a separate map I sent. That did not work very well. We finally had to break down the whole mind merge and then recreate it. I said that in ordinary working situations, the merge would not have so many people, probably. We reformed the merge and brought in the newcomer. When we all tried the visual to, uh, to visualize the newcomer's mind map as a separate map, the newcomer was ejected from the merge and we remained intact. So the trick of separating was for everyone to visualize the map. But one person in the group could, could cause a merge with a passive newcomer. The newcomer said that her mind was filled with the common mind map after the merge. I think that over time, a merge group is going to learn these sorts of things and do them fairly naturally. We're struggling now because we're so new to it that everything we try is new. Don't be discouraged, I sent to the group. We're, we're very happy with the progress here. Thank you very much for your help. It really made this a painless experiment, uh, Max sent, and then I disconnected from the group. I was going to start my homework, but I first wrote down what we had just learned. I sent it to Craig for posting with our research results, and I copied it to Tracy and Patty. I did not finish my homework before dinner time. I still had some reading left. During dinner, I told Mom and Dad about my call with the Secret Service. Mom said their agreement with us was for eight hours of consulting for this kind of troubleshooting and follow-up, so I could, I, I could expect to be called for another seven hours of consulting. I was supposed to round to the nearest quarter hour, so if I got a five-minute call, that would count as 15 minutes. If I took 20 minutes, that would round to half an hour. I also told mom about the call at school. She said I handled that well. I suggested that Max text me on my cell phone when he wanted to, to talk. I, it seemed like just after school might be a good time for them to call like today. Max mind called me about 7.30 and asked if I could work with another group connecting to passive newcomers. He thought it would take another hour since it would be similar to our earlier session. They were working late and on a crash schedule, it sounded like. They wanted to integrate mind skills into their ordinary work as soon as possible. Already the basic mind speech and mind mapping skills were being used by the people Patty and I had trained. The trainers we had trained were training their whole service in basic mind skills. It sounded like the advanced research group was trying to move into new areas. He was already in the mind merge when he called, so after quick introductions, I went through how to merge passive newcomers. 
This time it went very quickly and we were able to disconnect the passive newcomer without breaking the merge. There were several newcomers to experiment with. We merged them in and let them out without too much problem. One problem I raised for them was that the newcomer was going to see a boost in their mind map if, that, if they happened to have their eyes closed and happened to be thinking about people around them. I said that this might alert a passive newcomer that someone was looking at them. Uh, I said that working in pairs rather than such a large group would help prevent this and it might be possible to tone down the map intensity somehow. I asked if they wanted me to look into this or if they would like to experiment with other groups of newcomers some other time. They said li they'd like to try several groups of newcomers and they were going to work on them blind where the person people did not know they were being looked at. Then they would interview the newcomers to see if they feel anything when they're being watched. We made arrangements to have two more sessions like this like this one, tomorrow after school and at 7.30 again. I made notes about the time I, that I had used off their contract. I sent Max a brief note indicating what I had done today and the hours that were going to be charged. He replied in about 10 minutes and said, great, thanks for all your help. I finally got around to my reading homework. I had chapters and three books to read. It took me about an hour and a half. There's one chapter of the biography to edit. I sent that to Patty with only a couple of minor changes. Another few weeks and it would be done, I think. The ghostwriter was taking our emails from early in the summer and weaving them into a story. It was pretty interesting to me and I lived through it. Tuesday at school. Homeroom was as chaotic as yesterday. It quieted down after the bell and we heard the announcements. Among the announcements was a note that one of my videos was going to be available to classes during second and third periods. It said how important it was to keep up with the latest scientific developments in mind science. And oh, by the way, Dana Freehurst is a student in our school. If I thought my hallways were complicated before, they're now impossible. People stop me every few feet and either ask me how to learn to mic and speak or just congratulated me on the research I was doing. I had a pretty good idea the science teacher was responsible for the videos being played over the internal network. Sure enough, I had to watch myself in a video during science class. I later heard there were several classes that watched the same video. Some teachers gave handout, handouts with links to that video and the other ones online for individual viewing over the internet. It was a zoo after that class. I could not get from one class to another. I was late to three classes that day, but the teachers did not mind. They congratulated me on my work. I found a seat at the window side of the table at lunch. The, uh, that way people could not stand around talking to me. Teresa from gym class sat next to me and Paul sat across from me. They were trying to protect me. I was already tired and I had the secret surface training session to do when I got home. I sat with my eyes closed and tried to rest at home in my room. Somehow I finished my classes at school and then raced home to be there before the 4.30 training session. I had 20 minutes for a power nap and I grabbed a Coke and some cookies to see me through to dinner, I made a last pit stop and then my, Max Mind called me at exactly 4.30. The train, training session for merging passive newcomers went even more smoothly than the last two. There was a room next to the merge group where there were 10 people lined up on chairs. These were the volunteer newcomers. I had the group merge with each one, listen for any mind speech, feel for any feelings, and then disconnect. One of the volunteer newcomers must have been prepped because uh, she was broadcasting anger and resentment. That came through very clearly. Our hour rolled to a stop just as we were finishing. Max thanked everyone, thanked me, and then I disconnected. I read my homework assignments and then grabbed some dinner. I ate part of it with mom and dad but was running late and had to break for the next training session. This was the same setup as, as earlier. There were two ringers in the row of passive newcomers. One was swearing to him, himself and another one was just acting nervous. We could pick up nervousness. I finished the training session and my homework. The, the math problems were easy, but I did not want to get behind. 
So I took my time and did the extra credit problems. I read ahead in several of my classes. In science class, we were just reading through the first chapters for discussion. Wednesday at school. When I came into the homeroom, the teachers handed me a stack of half-page papers with copies of the links to the Mind Mappers website and to various videos that I had done. Someone had made them for me to hand out during the day. I guess someone realized how much time it was taking me to answer all the questions and talk to the people in the halls. I handed out a few in homeroom and they were gone before lunchtime. I got a note from my homeroom teacher excusing me from science class and directing me to the main office secretary at that time. When the bell rang before the science class period, I made my way to the main office. The secretary gave me a ma message from Max that I was to meet him with him in a few minutes. There was an empty office for me to use. I quieted myself and just rested my eyes before Max called. He mind called quite precisely at the time he had planned. Sorry for the short notice. We have a live exercise planned here in a few minutes. There is a, there's a group of visitors coming to the White House. We have checked them out ahead of time, but we wanted to use them as passive newcomers to see what this would be like in a real situation, he explained. Max was already in a merge with a group of six, including himself. Once I merged, I followed their mind map to see where the passive newcomers were located. One of the merge group pointed out the group of newcomers, and we started merging with them one by one. We found one person who was tired, one was angry because they'd lost luggage the night before, one person was kind of sick to her stomach, one person was really excited to see the president, a mix of people all coming to visit the president. We had time, since this was one of the groups I had already trained, to go through the newcomers even individually several times before they went in. We followed the newcomers as they met the president and we kept track of their surface thoughts and feelings while this was happening. We were done in about 40 minutes. Max was saying goodbye to me when I asked him if he could mind, if he would mind call, uh, mind call me privately. He said he would get back to me in a few minutes. I had time before my next class, so I just waited quietly, thinking about what I was going to tell him. Dana, this is Max, his mind call. Hi, Max. Thanks for calling me. I just had something I wanted to pass by you. Maybe I'm being paranoid. But let me tell you, and you make up your own mind, I said. Okay, what's on your mind, he said. Well, first, that is the first time I've seen a mind, the mind map with the president in it, in it. Anyone who can see the president's map can form a pair and listen in to what he's saying to others. Second, if you can track the president, you can track and listen in to the people around him. That's a very serious problem. I did not realize that was possible. From what we are doing, I see that it is possible, he said. That's the good news, I said to him. What else, he said. This is speculation. I do not know how large a group we could make if we merged as many people as possible. We might be able to get hundreds of people in a merge. The power grows roughly according to the number of the people in the merge. Could a large group attack the president and hurt him mentally, I said. Why do you say that, he said. Many people who are con contacted by a merge group are literally shocked when they are first contacted, it is a surprise to them when the group calls out to them, and when someone is calling from a merge group is very loud. It can hurt your mental ears. It can cause pain, I said. Anything else, he asked. This is pretty gruesome. When Tracy and I were merged with the boy in the hospital, we were shocked and felt serious pain while we were merged with him. If someone was merged with the president and that person died violently, could that hurt the, hurt the president, I said. I made notes as you're talking. I think you put them in priority order already. It'd be a serious breach of national security if someone could listen in to the president. A terrorist group could easily train hundreds of people to merge. We do not have any scientific basis to judge whether someone could be hurt by mental attack, like you suggested, but it's not something we can ignore. That last one is pretty gruesome, but there are dedicated terrorists and just crazy people out there who might try something like that, he said. Is there anything you can suggest for how to shield the president from intrusion, he asked. 
Do you by any chance have a scientific group looking into the physical basis of the mind merging, I said? There's several na national labs who are talking about it, but no one has any solid evidence for how it works, he said. Maybe if we knew how it was transmitted, we could find a way to block it. Also, could a group monitor and shield the president during mind merges, I said. The class bell rang in my background. I sent to Max, my class is about ready to start. I better go. I'll be thinking about these things. Tell me if you want to work on this in any way. I'm going to think about a shield for the president. I think any public or major figure could be a target for snooping. Thanks. He sounded distracted. We will not have a class this afternoon at 4.30, nor one at 7.30. Talk to you later, he sent and disconnected.